Nanotechnology is the study of changing matter on an atomic scale. For our experiment, we will be creating ferrofluid, a liquid that responds to a magnetic field. We will need iron sulfide, ammonium hydroxide, 2 molar hydrochloric acid, and iron 3 chloride. The iron 2 chloride and the iron 3 chloride creates the response to the magnetic field in the overall fluid. Here we are measuring out four different concentrations of iron 3 chloride. Each will be dissolved in 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. We want to test whether or not the different concentrations of iron 2 chloride and iron 3 chloride will create an effect on the overall magnetic strength of the ferrofluid. These are the different concentrations of iron 3 chloride. We do not have iron 2 chloride. Therefore, we will need to create it by mixing iron sulfide with hydrochloric acid. The top row has iron 3 chloride, the second row has iron sulfide, the third row has hydrochloric acid. The reaction between iron sulfide and hydrochloric acid takes a very long time. It is done under the fume hood. If you look clearly, you can see bubbles forming. Here we create the four different concentrations of iron 2 chloride. The equation for this reaction is shown here. 1 mole of solid iron sulfide plus 2 moles of hydrochloric acid results in 1 mole of aqueous iron 2 chloride and the poisonous gas hydrogen sulfide. After the four concentrations have reacted, we filter the solution to obtain the clear green iron 2 chloride solution. We will mix each of the iron 2 chloride solutions to its corresponding concentration of iron 3 chloride. Our hypothesis is that the greater the concentration of the two iron chlorides, the stronger its magnetic strength. After each of the iron chlorides have been mixed, they are each added to 50 milliliters of ammonium hydroxide. This creates a complex reaction that produces magnetite in the form of solid precipitate. In our experiment, we will also add 5 milliliters of oleic acid to be our surfactant. A surfactant holds on to an iron particle at one end and an oil or organic solvent at the other end. This way, the iron particles will not all gather together, instead, it will move with the liquid, thus changing its behavior and movement. Ferrofluids have many applications. They are used in electronic devices to cool them down as well as seals between moving parts. In medicine, ferrofluids are used as magnetic tracking agents to detect cancer. From here, we can see that the solutions have created black magnetite. We placed a magnetic stir into the solution to speed up its mixture. After hours of work and several trials, we realized to our disappointment that none of the ferrofluids that we created actually responded to a magnetic field. Eventually, we went back to the simpler way of making ferrofluid. By adding toner, a magnetic ink, to oil. The black powdery substance is the magnetic ink. For this simpler experiment, we still have different concentrations of toner to oil. To test its magnetic strength, we placed glass tiles between the beaker and the magnet. Tiles were added until no magnetic response was detected. The independent variable is the concentration of the magnetic ink, which is its ratio to oil. The dependent variable is the maximum number of tiles such that there is still a magnetic response in the liquid. The different concentrations of ferrofluids were 9 milliliters of oil, 11 milliliters of oil, 13 milliliters of oil, and 15 milliliters of oil, all added to 10 milliliters of toner. Here we can see the magnet picking up the ferrofluid. When the ferrofluid is released, the substance becomes a liquid again. 
the results of our experiments were graphed here. From this set of data, an increased volume of a carrier liquid in ratio to the amount of toner used increases the overall magnetic property of the fluid. This is contrary to our original hypothesis that the greater concentration of toner or magnetic particle, the greater its magnetic properties. If the graph is expanded on the semi-linear set of data, then a great amount of oil with little toner will create a high magnetic field. This is not logical, therefore it is possible that a closer to a perfect ratio that is above the ratio we have tried, then the greater the magnetic strength. Anything below or above would decrease its magnetic properties. We only had one trial in our experiment with a limited number of ratios of toner to oil. If we explored more concentrations, then we will be able to confirm our results.